What if Steve Jobs a year ago and John Chambers and Fred Smith got together and said, we're going to stop using energy in our buildings? What just went through your mind is it can be done, hopefully. The equivalent today is happening, and it's happening right before our very eyes if you know where to look. And it's what I call macro disruption. And we have a great opportunity with this macro disruption to take advantage of it. Now, as you can see, I spent the majority of my adult life looking at the world a little differently than many people. Uh, I flew Marine Corps F-18s uh, for about 25 years, and then later got to look at the world from the vantage point of policy for the President of the United States via my boss, General John Abizade, and then later on Special Operations Command as the Director of Global Combating Terrorism Network, which was really macroeconomics, religion, society, politics, technology, genealogy, and it was a whole host of looking at the world and, and how it functions and why it functions in the way it does. So I looked at disruption at a micro level, yellow sticky notes where they came from, and at a macro level, societal changes. You know, Al-Qaeda is a macro disruption. In business, we have the same opportunities, and you're hearing about it with water, you're hearing about it with the genome, there are tremendous opportunities out here if we know how to grasp it. And if we have the leadership and we're not afraid, we have the courage to embrace this. There's a really interesting paper out now called Mr. Why. For those of you, and I know at least Jim Falk I think is here, uh, for those of you who uh, are familiar with the X article, Keenan's article in 1946 that talked about uh, Soviet crisis, it's where we came up with a national narrative for containment. That was in a world in 1946 where we were able to contain things, that we felt like we could contain things, and we got away with it. We built our national strategy around containing what we perceived as a threat. The CEO, current CEO of IBM, Samuel uh, Palmasano, said that the greatest challenge today, and they've done a, st a study on it, CEO complexity uh, study survey, 1,500 CEOs and senior managers of all, private, uh, nonprofit, public. They went to 100 universities around the world, uh, 3,500 uh, students and uh, faculty members, and studied this complexity and got the opinions of what's the greatest challenge of the future. And that was that we're so integrated now today that we don't know how to handle this, this complexity, complexity. Complexity is not like being complicated. Complicated, you can take it apart. Airplanes are complicated. You can take those things apart, fix what's wrong with it, put them back together, and they behave, hopefully, in the manner that they did before you took them apart. Complexity is different. You're not really sure what's going to happen. You're not really sure of the impact that one input or one intervention might make on the entire ecosystem. That's what's going on right now today with this global economic crisis. We can't figure it out. Is it fiscal policy? Is it monetary policy? How do we solve these huge problems of today? Water, energy, food. You know, the Saudis are some of the largest investors in agriculture right now. That might be interesting to you. The Middle East is building a city at the UAE, Abu Dhabi, that's going to be carbon neutral. You know, we didn't leave the Stone Age because we ran out of rocks. We're not going to leave the fossil fuel age or the industrial age because we're out of fossil fuels. It's not sustainable. There's this, this Y article written by another F-18 pilot and a Navy uh, captain working for the Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, and we were finally able, those who study these kinds of things in the military were finally able to publish a follow-on to the X article. It's called Mr. Y. These two gentlemen's name, Wayne Porter and uh, Mark Mickleby, wrote about what is our national narrative for the future. And the national narrative for the future is sustainability. We've got to fix what the industrial age broke. The industrial age brought us many great things. Tremendous wealth, tremendous prosperity, but it did damage at the same time. So we're going to have to fix some of these things. Let's go back to Steve Jobs, Cisco, and FedEx. What if they said, I want to stop using energy. I want to stop paying energy bills on buildings. And also, I want to stop wasting water. And I want to do some other things, too. I want to enter the age of integration. But what's happening right now is, within the Department of Defense, the service chiefs 
these four-star generals that work for Admiral Mullen, Commandant of the Marine Corps, Chief Staff of the Army, the Air Force, Chief of Naval Operations, have said, we're going to stop using energy in our buildings. The only thing we're going to spend energy on are liquid fuels that go in ships, planes, vehicles with wheels. And it's happening right now. By 2020, the Air Force, the Navy, and the Marine Corps are going to get 50% of their fuels from biofuels. They're flying on them right now. When I flew my airplane less than three years ago, there was no discussion of biofuels. And we're not talking about taking food out of people's mouth biofuels. We're talking about algae and camelina, which is basically an oil seed. By 2020, let me say that again, by 2020, airplanes that fly, half of the airplanes that fly in the Air Force, half the fuel that the Air Force, the Navy, and the Marine Corps fly on will be biofuel. The Navy, in 2016, is going to sail a green fleet, meaning they're not going to sail with fossil fuels. That's impressive. That's change. That is a disruptive macro change. And it's coming to society. And we have the ability as a private sector and a society to take advantage of what's happening inside the Department of Defense. Some of the things that are going on in naval ships today are amazing. But before I, before I do that, I like to use this example that I used with the kids yesterday. By the way, the future looks bright. There are entrepreneurs coming, and they're not going to put up with what we put up with. The lead pencil was invented in 1550. Draftsman he invented the lead pencil. How long do you think it took to put an eraser on the back of that pencil? 200 years. 1770 is when the eraser was invented. 200 years, something as simple and elegant as a pencil and an eraser. The <laughs> draftsmen used bread to erase the lead for 200 years. Think about how fast things are moving now with this. Those of us in the military that study macroeconomics and macro societies and political change, we study cell phones. I mean, look at the Arab Spring. That's a macro disruption. That's the kind of possibility we have here with sustainability. Again, Mark Mickleby and Porter have said we need to move from an age of containment that we were satisfied with to an age of sustainment. I believe that'll be an, an interim period where we really leave the industrial age and the information age and the knowledge worker age to an age of integration. And in that integration, we're going to have to take what we've undone through the industrial age and put it back together so there'll have to be a lot of regenerative work done before we're able to get to a, an age of sustainability. Marine Corps right now says we're going to stop using energy on buildings. So in, in camps in Afghanistan right now, what was used, they were used to using 200 gallons of fuel a day has been reduced to 20, tenfold business, tenfold, 10x. There's a hotel building over here in, in Dallas uh, that just took a proposal to reduce the total amount of energy that it's using in this hotel, and it's a marquee skyline event. $2.5 million a year in energy savings, guaranteed. It doesn't cost more to do this. That's, a, that's an old green myth that it costs more to be green or energy efficient. It can be done. It actually is a value creation enterprise. Take $2.5 million a year and go 10 years, now you start playing with numbers. It's happened in San Francisco, the largest and greenest museum in the world. The insulation has blue jeans. Recycle blue jeans. It makes 30% or 10% of its own energy. It has reduced the total energy consumption of the building by 30%. I offer to you Steve Jobs, Chambers, Fred Smith, saying we're going to stop using energy on buildings. The only thing we're going to power is we're going to power vehicles until we get off of this addiction to fossil fuels. We heard it from President Bush. You're hearing it from the Department of Defense. What if? We as a society said, we're going to stop doing this. We're going to change the way we think, and we're going to stop doing damage to our planet, and we're going to integrate, and that's what this is. This is an integration of saving water, conserving water, extraordinary opportunities on the inside of the building to see planetarium, aquarium, rainforest, natural history, art museum. It took 10 years to do this from a disruptive event. 
That disruptive event was an earthquake, and then they rebuilt this. I offer to you that we have the opportunity. And I hope you take a look at it, think about it. Sustainability is our future. Thank you.